Hey, I'm Gavin Park Cameras, and today we're going to run through five tips to help improve your night sky photography. Now, I'm not talking about technicalities of shooting things like the Andromeda Galaxy specifically and stuff like that, but more of a sort of broad night sky landscape, very nice Milky Way, that sort of thing. Now, there's a lot to take into consideration when you're shooting the night sky. Things like the time of year, the time of day, obviously, your gear, the weather, everything can play a massive part into the kind of shot that you're able to get. So we're going to run through five tips to help you make the most out of your nighttime shooting. So tip number one is your location. So you want to try and find somewhere away from cities and towns so you can be away from the lights. If you can be away from a road, that's even better because you don't get the headlights and things like that. Anything you can do to reduce the amount of light pollution you're going to get in the shot. So the further out into the countryside and away basically from civilization that you can get, the better. Now, another couple of tips when it comes to location is a good idea to scout a location ahead of time. So ideally in the daytime. And that's because when it comes to nighttime, it can be a little bit difficult to set up a good landscape composition because it's dark. It's difficult to see what's around you, what you're gonna get in the shot and things like that. So it can be, that can be a little bit tricky. Um, so I like to go ahead of time to a location, plan it out a little bit, where I'm gonna go, the different spots I'm gonna try and take shots from, and just generally compose the shot ahead of time. So when I get there for the night shoot, I can just get straight into it. Now, another top tip for this as well is to avoid shooting into the direction that the sun has set. It's, even if it's a couple of hours after sunset, you're still gonna get a little bit of residual glow from the sunlight, uh, which is gonna light up the sky a little bit. Similarly, if you've got a city in the distance, then you may not be able to see it, but you will get glow from that city um, just in the, in the sky in general. So as much as you can do to shoot away from lights, the better shot you're gonna get. So tip number two is choosing the right settings. And sometimes this can be a little bit of a trial and error approach. So when it comes to your aperture, you wanna have a nice fast aperture lens because you wanna be allowing as much light as possible into the lens. So anything 2.8 or faster is gonna be is gonna be the best because you're gonna allow as much light as possible to come into the lens. And since you're trying to get all that starlight in, that's going to be better. Now when it comes to shutter speed, this can be a little bit more complicated, but it's actually quite easy to work it out once you get used to it. So you can determine how long your shutter speed should be by doing a simple sum. It's 500 divided by your focal length. Now why is that the case? Well, the Earth is actually spinning quite fast. So if you go longer than that shutter speed, then you run the risk of having star trails. That's where the stars have actually moved in the sky enough that they look like they've kind of smudged across. There's a little line where they've just moved in the sky as you've been taking the photo. And that basically just makes them look not sharp, they look a bit soft, and at least they're not such a great photo. So for example, if you're shooting a 16 millimeter lens, you do 500 divided by 16, it's a little over 30, so you'd do 30 second exposure. If you're shooting with a 50 mil lens, 500 divided by 50, that's 10, so you do 10 second exposure, and so on. That's how you can work out your shutter speed. Now when it comes to ISO, this is a little bit trial and error. I like to bump my ISO up. I've gone up to 6400 before, just to see what I can get out of the sky. And then you can come down 3200, 1600, 800 if you want, and just see what works best for you. You can try a few different photos, and you're gonna to want to. You're gonna to wanna to try a few different photos, different ISOs, different exposures generally, just to see what looks good for you. Now something else to bear in mind, if you're shooting with an APS-C sensor camera, you wanna make sure to use the true focal length when you're working out that shutter speed. So you need to add the crop factor to the focal length, then divide 500 by the overall focal length to get your shutter speed. Something else that's worth doing is just adding a two second or a 10 second timer to your shot so that when you press the button to take the photo, it counts down from two, counts down from 10, so that you take out any possible shake with the camera when you touch the button. It just removes any chance of vibration like that. So tip number three is to vary your photos. So you can try different positions, different angles, different compositions, different settings. Better to have more photos than not enough and get home and think, oh, I wish I'd just moved the camera slightly to the right. There would have been such a much better composition. But you can, you can try all kinds of different things. Don't be afraid to just snap away, take the photo. It's worth taking extra photos and nailing it, then coming away and thinking, oh, if only I'd done this one thing. So try different angles, get down low and shoot up, get further up high and, and, and frame things differently, choose different things in the foreground to focus on and, and have the night sky framing something or anything like that. But try all kinds of different photos uh, rather than picking one spot, one composition, one settings, done, I'm going home. It's also worth trying to find something interesting in the foreground 
to get an, an interesting overall composition. So if you're just relying on the Milky Way and the stars to make the picture, it's probably not gonna be the best picture. You wanna have something interesting in the foreground, whether it be a river, a lake, some trees, a forest, anything, something that's gonna make it an interesting landscape picture by itself, that the stars and the Milky Way just make amazing. You don't wanna rely on the stars and the Milky Way to make the picture, otherwise, it's just never going to be an amazing picture. So try and find something that you can frame up. And again, this just plays into it. Vary your shots up. Try a tree as your kind of leading thing with the stars next to it. Try some cliffs. Try a river. Try anything you can find to get an interesting composition with the stars in the Milky Way as part of the picture as opposed to just the whole picture. Now, tip number four is to check the stars and, very importantly, to check the moon ahead of time. So there's lots of apps and things you can get to check the positions of the stars, the position of the Milky Way, things like that. So you know which direction you're gonna to wanna to be shooting to get things like the Milky Way and get the best out of the stars. Now the other thing to check is the moon, the phase of the moon and the time it's gonna rise and set and things like that. And the reason for that is I have been out and not done that before. And I've gone out and the moon's come up, it's full moon and it's just completely wiped out the sky and I can't get the stars, I can't get the Milky Way, ruin the shoot and I know that's silly because you, you but you should just check it before you go ahead plan ahead because that will just ruin a shoot then you then suddenly it's a very different shoot and you're shooting with moonlight as opposed to trying to get the stars and things like that so check the stars so you know which direction things like the Milky Way are going to be so that when you plan out your compositions ahead of time you know exactly okay the Milky Way is going to be over there this river kind of runs to it I'll do it from over here as opposed to rocking up on the day um, and kind of winging it. That can work, but if you're prepared, you're probably gonna come out with better stuff. Same when it comes to the moon. If you know the moon's gonna be a full moon, but it's not gonna come out till 2 a.m., that's fine, just shoot before then, that's fine. But if you know the moon is in a phase where it's barely gonna be a thing, you could try and incorporate it into the shot. You could try and have that somewhere, um, but that's something to just plan out. As long as you've planned out ahead of time, then you should give yourself enough wiggle room to work things out. So tip number five is focusing. So how do you focus on the stars? Because autofocus doesn't work. So you're gonna have to manually focus and that can be really hard. So what you wanna do is turn in your live view. It's gonna be much, much easier with live view. And you wanna find a composition where you can see the stars in the live view. Now you wanna find the brightest star you can find, get it on the live view, and then use your camera's functionality to zoom in for, for focusing, assisting, on live view, so you zoom in on that star so that you get it as big as you can on the screen. Now, what you wanna then do is start moving the manual focus ring so that this, the actual point, the, the white dot starts to become smaller. You wanna get it to its smallest possible point. Now, at some point while you're focusing, it's gonna be getting smaller and at some point it's gonna change and start getting bigger again. That's when it's going back out of focus. So you wanna to get to its smallest point that's when it's in focus. Now when you've done that, you can zoom back out from the live view so it's just normal again. And that should now be locked in as in focus on the stars. Now this can be a bit trial and error sometimes. Sometimes you want to try different things. Um, sometimes you want to stack different exposures as well. So you do one focus on the stars, one focus on the foreground, and just try different things like that. But it's worth getting there and doing it right because when you get the stars pin sharp, they look so awesome. So that's our five tips for shooting the night sky. Now it's a great time of year to be doing this because the sun is setting so much earlier. So you can get out early. You don't have to wait for midnight to go out and shoot the night sky. It gets dark so much earlier now. You can actually, as we get further into winter, you can go at eight o'clock or nine o'clock and shoot the night sky and get some great shots. Um, so I hope these tips have been helpful. If you have any questions at all, pop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about any other tips you've got for shooting the night sky, so pop them down there as well. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.